Southern Arizona is a romantic region of stately saguaros, expansive cattle ranches, vineyards, and butterflies. Yes, butterflies. Southern Arizona is right smack in the migration path for the most colorful and most beautiful of all butterflies, the monarch. Monarch butterflies are the only insect to migrate up to 2,500 miles to get out of the cold weather and hibernate. Gail Morris led a group of school kids into the wilds on a tagging expedition to teach them a little about this winged jewel. We're going to try to get a little bit of the scales from their body. We talked about the importance of the monarch migration, and this is the time of their migration through Arizona. By tagging a monarch butterfly, we can see the movement of what direction they're going. These tagging expeditions have led to some surprising findings. Some monarchs will actually continue on their way outside of Mexico City to the overwintering grounds there. Other monarchs will go over to the coast of California. By tagging them, we could see which direction they're going from where, which area. Sometimes we'll be able to actually monitor them on their movement. Sometimes we'll tag one here and it'll move to another site where someone's tagging. We'll be able to see those movements, those corridors, so we could try to protect those corridors uh, to help preserve the monarch migration. Monarch butterflies go through four generations each year. The first three generations hatch from their cocoon state, also known as the pupa or chrysalis state, and live for up to six weeks. But the fourth generation continues to live on for up to six or eight months so that they can migrate to a warmer climate, hibernate, and then start a new first generation in the springtime. Today's trekkers have been fortunate to find some cocoons and caterpillars. Oh, that is so cool. But it's the adult monarch that provides the most fun. Christina Cellelli describes the swoop in the air method. I went to catch it and it was landed and then it flew off and I swooped it in the air. Lucy Burton relied on a little more stealth. I just snuck up behind it and grabbed it in between the wings. It was really fun. And of course, some techniques defy explanation. Well, Gail, how are our junior taggers doing? They're doing great. They're doing just very exciting things. They're finding all kinds of butterflies. Monarch butterflies, like many butterflies, are indicator species. They tell us how healthy our environment is. We see the effects of changing weather patterns. We see the biggest effect from loss of habitat. There were years before we would see millions and millions of monarch butterflies, and both in the overwintering areas in Mexico and along the coast of California, those numbers are diminishing dr drastically. And we can't help them and see what's happening unless we know which directions they're flying through. And so that's part of what we're doing today. Another thing we're doing today is simply investigating what we're finding on our expedition. Someone just found a little frog. Um, it's nature at her best today. Perfect day, perfect weather. And a perfect way to learn about nature while spending some quality time with your kid. You get time with your kids, quality time. You don't have uh, video games in the way and uh, noise from radios. In fact, where we're at right now, there's not even cell phone service, so you don't have to worry about any interruptions from your phones. And so I think it's a good time just to bond with your kids while you're learning and, and they're learning. But look what happened where the white dots are. So when you have white and the orange, we have a queen butterfly. So James, tell us why activities like this are so beneficial to learning. I think they're beneficial because you get that hands-on uh, exposure. I know when I went through uh, biology classes and things like that, when I was a kid, you'd learn kingdom phylum class, order, family, genus, species, and you'd see pictures in a book, and they meant pretty much nothing as soon as I walked out of the classroom. Out here, they're actually getting to see things and learning the difference between a chrysalis and a cocoon. and you know, what types of creatures do that. And I think that's what really makes these, in fact, I'm learning a lot out here even, you know, just uh, watching the kids learn. Whatever capture technique one has perfected, eventually you need to get the butterfly out of the net and attach the tag. Lucy Burton explains this delicate procedure. Well, it was on my fingernail, so I just slipped it on in between the little veins and it just stuck right on the little scales. Then I kind of held it there for a little bit and then I put it on my palm and it flew away. There we go. 
Well, that is the preferred release technique, but others are much more fun. In the Southwest Monarch study, we've had about 10 recoveries. Most of them have been in Mexico, but a few have been in California. We've also had a few monarchs that have spent the winter in the Phoenix area, and so we're always monitoring and looking at those. East of the Rockies, Monarch Watch has had thousands of recoveries. And so part of it is us learning where our monarchs go here. This is uncharted territory. So everyone here, the parents and students alike, are all being citizen scientists today, writing down their observations, what they see, and hopefully we'll find out where they go. Loss of habitat, pesticides, pollution, and the decline of milkweeds the caterpillars feed on are all believed to contribute to the decline of monarch numbers. A lot of times the monarch butterflies here like going to the thistles that you see. That's often one of their favorite nectar sources. While it may take considerable time to define the specific locations of these migration corridors, Gail has some ideas of how you can help. You could check the website, the southwestmonarchs.com. Uh, there's also a Facebook page for interest in Arizona. They can create their own way station in their backyard also by going to monarchwatch.org and look up monarch way stations. It'll give you an idea of the different milkweeds and different plants to grow in your backyard to invite them to visit your yard, and it works. In my yard right now in the Phoenix area, I have 22 caterpillars, and I have another seven that are eggs right now just waiting to emerge. So if you planted a, a lush banquet, they will come.